Okay, I'm now recording. We tried to record this video before, but the audio had a bit of a malfunction. So here are again. Uh, my name's Izzy and I'm joined here today with Lauren and we're going to talk a bit about mental health and how this can be promoted during this pandemic. Um, would you like to introduce yourself a bit? Uh, yep. Um, hi, I'm Lauren. I'm a University of Derby student studying counsel and psychotherapy, which obviously there's massive hints around then COVID, mental health, you know, an area that I'm very interested in. <laughs> so this is right up my street. <laughs> yeah. Um, so obviously COVID-19 has presented a lot of challenges for many people because it's such an uncertain time and you know we can't socialize we're not in the same routine um and i guess we all have different coping mechanisms uh what are some of the ways you stay positive during this time uh, yeah so some of my favorite ways is either going out for walks or runs just generally going outside for exercise clearing your head um or making some sort of a schedule so I, I know sort of day by day, a weekly schedule or a daily schedule of things that I have to get done during the day, whether it be little things or big things during the day, whatever, university lectures, just taking that time out, going for a walk or whatever, doing the laundry, doing the dishes, sort of anything to keep me motivated is sort of keeping everything in order, but sort of mainly exercise or even, you know, socially distance, going out with my friends just for a walk, you know, going to the park, anything, just go outside and get a bit of fresh air. Yeah, I think it's definitely important to kind of, as we're on on our phones uh, doing university lectures, it's definitely important to kind of, uh, you know, have an hour's break, have time to go outside, to go on a run, just to take time out, a bit of a detox from all the technology. And um, as we spoke before, I guess technology here is... <laughs> You know, it can be a good thing, as you said before, like Zooming friends and family, but also it can <laughs> take a toll when we use it too much. Yes, definitely. You know, it's finding that crucial balance in between sort of we're on university lectures, you know, school, even right down to primary school age, people on Zoom calls for the classes, that's their compulsory education. But then also we've got social media sort of checking, like keeping up with friends, social media is watching YouTube, watching TV, sort of keeping up with the news, which can be quite daunting. You know, it's, it's very easy to be on screens from the second you wake up, the second you go to bed at night. And it, it's very easy to just lose track of time during the day. So I think the most crucial bit, especially during COVID and especially during these unprecedented times, whenever we're at home all day, every day, is just to find that balance in between social media and not even social media just technology being I, like being good for us being beneficial being a bonus but also it being detrimental to mental health you know it it, it boosts our mental health by keeping us in contact with the people we love but also it can you know it, it can be a social media but it can be some of the most lonely as well because you know you are just on the screen so it can detach you from reality as well yeah especially with the news all kind of focusing you know is all kind of bad at the moment um yeah so um also you mentioned um before about kind of separating your workspace and your bedroom could you explain that again um yes so I was saying how I, I find that being in a routine you know getting up in the morning perhaps setting an alarm maybe 9 10 a.m you know getting yourself up out of bed sort of getting dressed and then I, I find that instead of staying in my bedroom perhaps sitting in my bed doing my lectures I like to go into the living room or the kitchen so that I've got a separate space you know in my head sort of getting the rooms in the house prioritized into so my bedroom is where I'm chilling you know just like sitting there have nothing to do I'm just relaxing I'm going to bed perhaps reading you know it's my wind down time it's my time where I'm calm and yeah. then kitchen or living room sort of sitting at the table doing my university lectures so I know that that's when I need to be productive as obviously before COVID we had that separation of you were going out with your friends you were physically outside you were in a different environment or you were in university on campus in lecture halls where you know you knew you had to be focused because you were seeing the people around you focused and you were in the university campus whereas now it's very easy just 
to stay in bed all day. You, you know, you're sitting in your bed doing your lectures. You're sort of watching TV in your bed. You're eating just like you can just sit on your bed and eat, and then just going to sleep as well. So it, it, that's quite detrimental to mental health for a lot of people, especially people who either have no previous mental health history of depression or it can very easily lead into depressive thoughts where you're just in bed all day every day and you're feeling very unmotivated yeah I think yeah because obviously the our routines are you know we're out of routine and it's very easy to just kind of do lectures in bed um so yeah I think that's very insightful about the separation of kind of your bedroom being like your downtime like you know reading obviously going to sleep watching something and of and then moving doing your university work kind of at the kitchen table living room um yeah so um do you have any tips when you're feeling kind of stressed or overwhelmed how to kind of manage that um, I find the biggest thing for me is honestly just exercise. It doesn't have to be massive amounts of exercise, even just going out for a small walk, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour. You know, anywhere really can be a nice scenery if you just put your heart in enough. Like even if it's just going, obviously I live in Derby City Centre. It's not the nicest place to be in Derby City Centre, but, you know, you can find some nice parks. You know, you just go for a little walk, even for half an hour just to clear your mind, either just in the silence of your own mind or else put earphones in, just listen to some music. You know, that, that, that definitely helps me to sort of take time away. But also that that schedule of sort of being up early in the morning, whatever, for a 9 a.m. lecture. But if it's a 9 to 12 lecture, once the lecture's over, just make your final notes, close your laptop and then go and detox sort of off your phone, off screens, perhaps go for that walk or read a little bit not necessarily a book to do with university something that's completely aside it you know that that schedule during the day of having even hour by hour on your schedule of what you're doing if you've got lectures booked in for the day if you've got let's say an hour taken out that you're going for a walk and what other time you've got during the day sort of just schedule not only a weekly schedule but perhaps a daily schedule could work for people as well just to keep you in routine keep you motivated yeah do you would you say you kind of do this schedule first thing in the morning at night what, how do you I find I mean I, I've made one myself personally and I made it because I find that every week with me is quite similar because I've got my routine lectures at the same time sort of each day during the week and also because I work a part-time job alongside university as well I find that that sort of there's a silver lining to that where yes it, it can be quite stressful sometimes having a lot to balance but it sort of keeps me in routine where I know that I have the shifts to work during the week I have my university lectures and sort of every week is the same for me so I sort of made it at the start of university whenever the semester started but obviously people you could do a weekly schedule or you could do a daily schedule if you're making little tasks that you have to get done it's really up to personal preference I prefer to do mine sort of just in the morning whenever I wake up I think right what all do I have to to get done today just jot them down even if it's little tasks just even washing the dishes or just tidying your room or something if you write lots of little things down the to-do list each one you get to take off gives you a little boost of like right okay I've accomplished it like you can see it all coming together even if it's little things it's just little rewards it doesn't have to be big tasks yeah I think as much as it is good to stick in a routine it's also you know it's also okay to you know have those days where you just don't want to do anything um because yeah obviously it's very hard to stick in this routine and it's okay just to have you know a day or two not doing anything um do you ever like reflect on your emotions do you ever like write anything down um yes far enough it's something that I started doing it was a sort of new year's resolution thing I'd started for myself where I started a little daily diary of at the end of each day I'll write down three things which I either like three things that I was happy or proud of myself for getting done or three things that sort of motivated me or something I was grateful for so it's like three like massive positive things during the day and one thing that I could have improved during the day that thought maybe like it, it, not necessarily something I didn't get done but something I could have done slightly better or could have reacted like a situation I could have reacted slightly better in but 
then at the end of the week, so you have your three positives and one negative each day and then at the end of the week you can look back and sort of you can do a weekend review as well and see sort of how well did this week go in relation to last week and you know what can I do next week to perhaps make it a bit easier for myself you know it's just about self-reflection but also as you said you know it is important to take some time out like routines are good schedules good but also we are in the middle of a pandemic nobody could predict this so it's very important to be nice to ourselves as well you can't hold yourself to the same standards which you held yourself to before COVID because obviously everybody's in the same position that's definitely something that's very important to remember is everybody's in the same boat everybody's got this overwhelming stress you know we don't know what's happening next you know with obviously lockdown reviews and tears and people not seeing family and friends you know it's very just it, it nobody really knows what's happening next so it is very important to take time to sort of be kind to yourself and don't hold yourself to too high of standards because it can be unrealistic. Yeah, definitely. Um, would you say this is transferable for like yeah, people doing A levels, high school? What what kind of tips would you give for say a younger audience? Um, yes, I, I definitely think that it is transferable. Obviously. You know, at Christmas, you've seen some family members, you know, like grandparents or aunties or uncles, you know, they were all on FaceTime or Zoom calls and, you know, even having their Christmas dinner, just it, it was definitely a very different Christmas. But, you know, mm-hmm. calling, you know, keeping connected via that, but also the whole way down to primary school or nursery, you know, you might have seen some videos maybe on TikTok, Facebook or whatever of like even like nursery teachers doing Zoom calls with their classes, even if it's just show and tell where the children come on FaceTime and show them a teddy or a toy that they have at home. You know, it, it, it's definitely the whole way through the life stages. It, it can be transferable. Everybody's mental health is important. So I'd, I'd find definitely for children, perhaps maybe Just Dance or those little like children's dance workouts, not necessarily workouts, but you know, just like fun little dances you can follow along, perhaps if they're on Zoom calls with each other or if they're doing it with, you know, parents or siblings or whatever at home, you know, that could be fun for all ages, little like obviously just dance, any like wee games, that sort of thing, you know, YouTube workouts for children the whole way up to, you know, us like adolescents where you know, like it's very focused on influencers, maybe like workout videos or whatever, or adults like the older ages just keeping fit doing any sort of movement at all at home it's definitely very important when you can't leave the house yeah um well thank you that was very insightful